So now we've looked at basic usage, we are going to look at just changing these error messages. And we're going to do this in one of three ways. The first thing that we're going to look at is adding a rule message. So any required rule output in terms of an error will have the value that you give this. So this just means that we can say something like v add rule message. The first argument of this method is the rule that you want to uh, change the message for. And the second is the actual message. So we could say something like you better fill in the X field. So the reason I've left X here is because we can actually use placeholders here to replace the field name. So I can just type in field here surrounded in uh, curly brackets. And then when we see a required message, we see that change to you better fill in the username field. And obviously, if it was a password field, this would say password. So the next thing we're going to look at is adding a field message, which basically allows you to specify for a particular field and on a particular error, what message you want to see. And this provides you greater flexibility because sometimes you don't want to apply the same error to a required field. So for example, we could do something like add field message for the username. When the username is required, we want to say, you need a username to sign up. Now this is a very specific error because it means that for uh, the username that we provide, this is talking about signing up. So we're saying that the username is required for signing up. You can obviously change these around to use placeholders if you want to, but generally these two methods uh, coupled together just provide you extra flexibility when you are outputting error messages. So the next thing I want to look at is using uh, field aliases. So this allows you to provide an alias for each of your field names. So for example, say we were quite happy with uh, just the way these errors looked, but we just wanted to update the um, username, the email, the password confirm and password fields. Now, instead of adding custom rules, we can use aliases here. So we can use a pipe symbol and then we can give the alias for this field. So I'm just gonna add pipe symbols here and just say I want this to be email, I want this to be password, and then password confirm, which is probably where uh, the alias fits in best here, I'm gonna say password confirmation. So all this is going to do is when we refresh, username is required, username must be a minimum of three, email and password confirmation must match password. So now that we know how to use Violin in its basic form, Next, we're going to look at a real world example of using this to validate a form. And we'll then also look at how we can output errors in a sensible way within that form when the user submits the page.